is the key to humanity's belief in the supernatural. Even in the 21st century, despite all that science has revealed about the indifferent vastness of the universe, the human mind remains a wanton storyteller, creating intention in the randomness of reality. The delivery of rewards by a one-armed bandit is determined at random, but many gamblers want to think that what they do can increase their chances of winning the jackpot. They stand on one leg or wear a lucky shirt. Are these superstitious behaviors a byproduct of our evolution? All wild animals have to be kind of natural statisticians, looking for patterns in the apparent randomness of nature when they're looking for food or trying to avoid predators. There are two kinds of mistakes they can make. They can either fail to detect pattern when there is some, or they can seem to detect pattern when there isn't any, and that's superstition. Sixty years ago, the American psychologist B.F. Skinner investigated the behavior of pigeons, rewarding them with food when they learned to peck a key in the feeding apparatus. But then Skinner set the apparatus to reward the birds at random. Now the pigeons just had to sit back and wait. But that isn't what they did. Instead, the majority developed what Skinner called superstitious behavior. When an individual pigeon, for example, happened to look over its left shoulder and the reward mechanism just happened to click in at that point, it would have got the idea that it was looking over the left shoulder that had got it the reward, so it tried it again. By sheer luck, as it happened, the reward mechanism delivered food at the same time again. And so the pigeon was reinforced in its idea that looking over the left shoulder was what got it the reward. And it went on and on and turned into a maniac for looking over the left shoulder. Humans can be no better than pigeons. We constantly create false positives. We touch wood for luck, see faces in toasted cheese, fortunes in tea leaves. These provide a comforting illusion of meaning. This is the human condition. We desperately want to feel there's an organizing force at work in our bewilderingly complex world. And in the irrational mindset, if you believe in the mystical pattern you've imposed on reality, you call yourself spiritual. Spirituality is a prized commodity. The media tell us to respect spiritual souls and their apparently deep insights. Spiritual self-help guides do a roaring trade in the material world, outnumbering science books by three to one. But what does spirituality actually mean? So please take your seat and please come slowly and gently. Uh, so that we can start the proceeding without losing time. So could you please... Uh... Satish Kumar is the editor of Resurgence, an ecological magazine at the sandal-wearing end of the Green Movement, and he counts amongst his many fans Prince Charles and the Dalai Lama. I represent the entire history of evolution. I was present in the beginning, the first Big Bang, and I'll be here for billions of years to come. But isn't Satish's spirituality just about imposing yet another superstitious false positive? The world is made of two elements. One element is visible element. The other aspect of creation is invisible dimension, things we cannot see. So, so what is that element which is invisible? 
I call it spiritual. When you go in a room, you say, there is a good feeling here. There is a spirit of ah, the room. Well, now you've changed to something rather different. The, the spirit is a very big and very holistic and very inclusive word. It is not defined in a one particular way. So when you go in a room, you can say, the tree has a spirit. A, a rock has a spirit. It's a living rock for me. Nature without spirit cannot exist. Like a tree cannot exist without the sunlight, it cannot exist without rain, it cannot exist without soil, also it cannot exist without the tree-ness. The tree-ness is the spiritual quality. Or, or the rock-ness. Or the rock-ness. When you talk about the rock-ness or the quality of a rock, uh, I can see as a scientist a rock has hardness and things like that, but I think that's not quite what you mean. Um, it sounds as though what you do mean is something imposed by the human observer. A rock is, 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 but, is but atoms. But there is a rock quality in the rock. Well, you, th that's a matter of assertion. I mean, you, you are now simply asserting that. Asserting, I'm understanding it. This is my yeah. understanding. Okay. Some may understand more fully than others, but it is not imposed. It is there. It all sounds very poetic, but it's not reality. Like priests, mullahs and rabbis, New Age mystics ceaselessly attempt to fill gaps in human understanding with fabricated meaning. Science and rationality are often accused of having a cold, bleak outlook. But why is it bleak to face up to the evidence of what we know? The word mundane has come to mean boring and dull. And it really shouldn't. It should mean the opposite. Because it comes from the Latin mundus, meaning the world. And the world is anything but dull. The world is wonderful. There's real poetry in the real world. Science is the poetry of reality. And yet today, science is under attack. Next, I want to look at the dangers that poses. Why do I have to trust, you know, the GP? Why do I have to trust the Royal Society? I think you're so close to being right, but yet you're damn wrong. <laughs>